video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. In this one, I'm going to be looking at uh, a channel called Empress Energetics. And this individual is that, Empress Energetics. And their guest is this individual. And this individual is going to be asking this individual questions about quantum grammar. Uh, this was published when? May 31st, 2023. And from the links given down here, I will have to say that this individual comes from the Colon Russell hyphen J. Colon Gould follower contingent. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to listen to a little bit of this, some of the questions she's asking, and the way she answers to find out exactly what level of knowledge this individual has on the grammar. Do they know what they're talking about? Or are they just repeating catchphrases that they've heard other people say? And they don't really have a clear cognition of what they're saying, just that they're repeating these catchphrases, which is very common in the Russell J. Gould contingent. So let's, let's see what's going on here. So uh, first off, I want to point you to my name here. Uh, you'll see a colon and then a hyphen, my middle name and then a colon, and then my last name, period. So what that does is set my name as a fact. So if you look at the clock, it says. So she made the statement, it sets her name as a fact. Now let's see what her closure is, what her cognition is what her understanding is of that statement. How is she going to prove that colons set her name as a fact? Like right now it is 134. Fascinating. Um, and there's a colon there. So we know it's communicating time. So there's no subjective, inter it removes the subjective interpretation. Oh, well, 134, is it 134? Is it 134? Is it? So it, it opens all this subjective interpretation, whereas my name um, is placed as a fact that uh, for the Christina hyphen Beatriz of the Hawaiian family. Why do folks want to? tack the name family on at the end of their name, unless they're trying to convey that that's the name that's shared by their family, that's fine. But when you write out the name on a live life claim, normally you wouldn't put family in there, unless you want to put it in brackets or something like that. Or if you literally want to attach the word family as a fact to your last name with a hyphen as a compound fact, I guess. But why? I don't understand why people feel the need to do that. Uh, something else she's saying about the colon. This is something that David Wynn Miller has said in videos where he uses the colon as an example. Just a way to explain why they use colons in correct sentence structure. Now for me, at the beginning, as a beginner, that was fine. It made sense. It's like, wow, he's right, you know. But then I started to pick apart the layers. And you look at the way a colon is used with numbers, there's no spaces. Like she's saying, one, two, three, four. If it's one, three, four, if it's one thirty-four, one hour, 34 minutes in the morning, 
1 colon 3 4 there's no space between the colon how do you even know what it means unless you say give closure to what the colon means and there's no colon in front of the one so one colon three four with no spaces to me is just a pronoun because there's no closure given to the functions there's no spacing to separate this term from another term or this symbol from that term to give the function uh, in the order of operations so to speak so while for the beginner as this individual is over there on the left on the port side that might be good you know to get them into that mindset but if you move a little bit further it, there's more closure that needs to be given because more questions are going to come if the individual you know is, is is truly curious about this and truly wants to learn now again this individual Christina has not given any closure as to why her name is a fact and how colons figure factor into that how, how colons figure into that she has not given any closure she's drawing sort of implications but no clear closure yet so um it's placed in a mathematical interface or or grammar to uh, preset the facts Okay, now she's brought another element into it, mathematical interface. Now, if I were this Melissa on the, on the left there, I'd be like, how's that work? Where are the numbers? What, what's she talking about, mathematical interface, to preset the facts? Isn't presetting, doesn't that negate the now space? Anything that negates the now space is no contract. Anything that's not happening right now doesn't count. <laughs> so again, folks, what I'm looking here, looking for here is knowledge and closure on Christina's part. And so far, as I said at the beginning, all I'm hearing is her repeating things she said. First stuff that David Wood Miller said, and now stuff that Russell J. Gould says about presetting the facts. That's a turn of phrase that Russell uses at his seminars. And that's a turn of phrase that he uses to explain <clears throat> how quantum grammar works in his mind. And so I have not heard any uh, solidification of closure from Christina other than her parroting what other people say. Um, so how I came into this knowledge. So, I don't want to interrupt. Sure. Just like I'm sure a lot of people have questions. If my name, and I just yes. copy-pasted yours, I've seen it before, but I, I can't speak about what that means. If there's just Melissa, Renate, Funk, what would that mean? Or am I now out of law or in some sort of legality? Like, what does it mean if my name is just placed as is without... Um, with okay. This individual, Melissa, is asking a common question that someone would think to ask coming from the fiction system right away they want to know how does this relate to law and legalities she doesn't care about the mathematical interface she doesn't care about you know what a colon means or why Christina's name is a fact which by the way Christina has not said why or how her name is a fact she's not giving closure to that not only that but she has compounded things by mentioning mathematical interface and has said nothing about how that works which if she knew how it worked she could give that closure in 15 to 20 seconds but she doesn't which is what my guess was coming into this because no one over there in the russell j gould contingent does have crystal clear, clear closure on this uh, they just parrot what he says and he never, to my knowledge, I mean, if, if there was closure over there, don't you think they would share it to the public? Don't you think it, it would come through in their conveyances that you know they know what they're talking about? But anyways, this person is definitely coming at it from a practical standpoint. They want to know how this 
can be integrated or, or used in relation to the fiction system? About the, the, the punctuation, great question. So if you look on your driver's license or your birth certificate, you'll see your name in all capitalization. And what that is, is code for the Black's Law Dictionary dirt, uh, or Jurisdictionary, Jurisdiction. So that place it, the all caps is a code that puts you in the court system or the corporation meritocracy, which is your courts, your government. So it's all caps where uh, your birth certificate is the first contract that allowed them to contract behind uh, behind your back, basically. Okay. I feel like this is a common misconception with most people, including Christina, that don't understand most likely how this works. Apologies if she does. If she does understand it, she's not conveying it here. What she's saying is only like half of the story. Think about contract, folks. How does contract work? Contracts by consent. Birth certificates are not written with your consent. Now, let me bring it to be specific to myself. My birth certificate was not written with my consent. I didn't have to have the intellectual maturity to cognize what the hell a birth certificate is. The birth certificate was a fiction babble contract that was created between, for me, for example, my mother and the system, the fiction system, the foundling hospital where, where I was physically birthed. It was a contract there. It's a bill of the lading. And what she says is partially correct or true, I would say, that that contract, that fiction, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun contract in a box, whatever it's called, certificate of live birth, birth certificate, uh, whatever you want to call it does tie you into that system. But it's based on assumption. Because you didn't consent to it. Someone else did. And so all your life, maybe you go through your life thinking that that name is your name. But it's not. You didn't create it. Someone else did. So it's not yours. So why would you use it? Well, they're more than happy to let you use it because that's how they make their money. Bottom line. So, there you go. Basically, um, there's a, a lot of uh, information out there, a lot of rabbit trails. I uh, don't want to get too far into that, but basically it's code for you're in that system and the colon Christina hyphen Beatrice colon Hawaiian puts me into the quantum banking system, which is uh, in juxtaposition as dual citizenship. So I'm here, but I'm in the world, but not of it. So I'm part of the quantum banking system. So the name, I don't want to have the all capital name because that's their format. I am now placed as a fact in the correctness. That last part, that last part is good. The last part is good. But the first part where she's talking about the quantum banking system, that may be true for her. Like she may have a live life claim that she paid for 150 bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks, whatever it is, through Russell J. Gould and his people, where that live life claim, uh, the terms and conditions of that live life claim, is that you have Russell J. Gould's autograph and thumbprint on it, and then you become a part of his quantum banking system. That's his system. Just like the fiction system is the fiction system. That's their system. Well, Russell J. Gould's quantum banking system, that's his system. So either which way, you're part of someone else's system. Someone else has authority over you. Um, to put this on the table, what I teach is completely different than that. 
what I teach is, is autonomy and correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, which is a mathematical interface on grammar. My concept of the live life claim comes from before Colin David Eiffel when Colin Miller passed away. So David Wynn Miller brought this technology to the public in 1988. So from 1988 until 2018, the concept of the live life claim was that you must have three live life claim witnesses on your live life claim. They autograph it, thumbprint it, they witness you. They see you, they meet you, they talk to you, they witness you. You can't witness someone if you don't sense them first. Three. Three is trust. Certify that you're a living, breathing creature. Along with the postal mechanics, the flag mechanics, the banking mechanics, all that stuff, the grammar mechanics. That's the concept I use and that I teach. After Colin David Ivan Wynn Colin Miller passed away, Russell J. Gould modified that system to bring it into his own little classified system that you kind of have to pay to use, which I don't know what use it is, actually, because I've never heard anybody having any success with it. But anyways, the, the point I'm making is folks like her pay to use this system. And there's only one witness or one autograph other than hers on her live life claim, which is Russell J. Gould. And I'll bet you dollars to donuts that when that live life claim was created, that she never spoke with Russell J. Gould. It's like a conveyor belt. It's like these folks send in their money to pay for the live life claim, send in their fiction identification. Maybe they send in a social security card. I'm saying maybe, I don't know for sure. Maybe they send in a driving license, a birth certificate, something. Some sort of fiction credentialing. They send it in to Russell J. Gould's people. And they look at it. And then he just, like a conveyor belt, autograph, thumbprint, <laughs> autograph, without even witnessing it. So they're saying that his autograph and thumbprint is enough to verify and confirm that you're a live life claimant. Whereas before that happened, you actually needed two or more other living creatures to witness you and autograph your live life claim. So for my part, I have never, ever, ever agreed that anyone should have to pay for a live life claim. And before David Wimmiller passed away, there was no such thing. You just created the live life claim on your own, of your own volition, of your own authority. So. So it cannot be manipulated. And I can go further into that as to why it can't be manipulated. Beautiful. Just to recap. So if I use the punctuation, you know, I can state that I'm sovereign and I can energetically free myself through inner work and all of these things. But through the language and this, I'm basically in the physical stating I'm no longer in this world. I'm, I'm outside of it and I'm in a different, I'm in quantum law right now and I'm operating in quantum law, right? Yeah. So when you get your live life claim, it's basically that's like the birth certificate. So you're saying, hey, I'm a living being. So if you were to uh, go and close the birth certificate account, they'll say you have killed your child. You are a murderer, blah, 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 blah. Because that's they, again, they can interpret it. It's that subjective interpretation. That's a new one. I never heard that one before. Interpretation, whereas I am a, for I am a live life claimant, I'm a living being, I breathe and I am conscious and I'm able to make sovereign choices. So you're stating a claim. So that birth certificate doesn't allow you to state a claim because it's in a, what we call fiction language. The birth certificate doesn't allow you to make a claim. That's interesting. 
Because folks, I can guarantee you that you, me, her, and that other lady contract every day and make claims using adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. Every day. While I do understand what she's trying to convey in the context of the discussion, it's not entirely correct. Because what is fiction? When we use the term fiction, when I use the term fiction, what does it mean? Fiction, if you have a fiction book and a non-fiction book, one's imaginary, right? An imaginary story, the other supposedly is not. So what are we talking about? Fiction doesn't exist. It only exists if you presume and assume it exists. The value of a thing is what you ascribe to it. The power of a thing is what you give to it. What you allow it to have. Contracted by consent. So in this short, uh, I don't know, about seven or so minutes that I've watched of this, I've seen enough to know that Christina does not have closure on the grammar. I'll say this. If you want closure on correct sentence structure, communication, policy, syntax, grammar, i.e. quantum grammar, if you want closure on it, if you want to understand it, rather than, like Christina here, just parroting things you hear other people say, if you want a truly in-depth cognition of it, going to towards Russell J. Gould and that contingent is not going to get you that closure. I can say that with 100% confidence. In seven years of doing this, I know this. You're going to have to go somewhere else for that. But if you want to be a part of a group with a leader, if you want to be a follower, if you want to take what you're doing in the fiction system right now and just move that over to a different system with another authority figure, an authoritarian construct, there you go. You can join Christina and uh, pay your money and go do whatever they do. Whatever it is they do. I have no idea what it is they do. I don't see any evidence that any of them have ever been successful at what they're doing. But hey, you know, what do I know? I don't really pay attention to them in particular. I just pay attention to what I see on the YouTubes and things like that. I keep my eye open to see, hey, I wonder if, you know, the, the, the chief is always coming. I wonder if he actually came yet. Or if he's still coming, I don't know. It's it's like a perpetual coming scenario. Hey, yo. All right. So if either of these individuals here uh, see this video, they're more than welcome to contact me at the email address at the bottom of the screen and apply for a workshop or apply for a consultation, 10 to 15 minute video consultation. They can ask me whatever they want to ask me. And I'll give them closure. I'll give them closure on the mathematical interface and the grammar, how it works. I'll give them closure on the punctuation, the uh, colons, the hyphens, everything, if they want it. It's here for them. And if they don't want to contact me, they can just look at my channel, which has about a thousand videos on here, where you can learn this grammar technology free. There's no paywall. You don't have to go to Patreon. You don't have to pay 500 bucks for a private one hour a uh, consultation with me. <laughs> I don't know if that's how much it is, folks, but I do know that uh, there is a paywall over there and uh, basically given celebrity status over there, which is fine if that's what floats your boat. Uh, I'm not about that. I'm not about hero worship or nothing. Else. What I'm about is geometric level playing field of contract communication. Rule one, rule equal. If you want to be autonomous, I can show you how to do that. If not, there's plenty of other folks out there who will take your money and lead you along just like the Pied Piper. Mm -hmm.